Welcome to video 75 in series 3, and in this video I'm going to write the enemy detection script. Okay, so I'll write a new C sharp script and call it enemy detection. And I'll use an overlap sphere and a line cast to search for the player. I won't need the uh, start method here. And I'll have a few new methods, void, carry, out, detection. I'll have a coroutine, I'll write that a bit later. Avoid, disable, this. And quite a few variables as well, private, enemy, master, enemy, master, private, transform, my, transform, public transform head so this is where the uh, enemy will cast their line from their line cast from public layer mask player layer public layer mask site layer private float check rate and private float next check Private float detect radius. I'll just hard code this. You can make it public and expose in the inspector and change it. And uh, also, private raycast hit. And I'll just call that hit. Okay, so in disable this, I'll simply write this enable is equal to false, and that'll stop the update method from continuously running when the enemy dies. And I guess I might as well set up my initial references as well. So enemy master is get component, and that component, of course, is oh, not that enemy master. There we go. And then my transform is equal to transform. I'll have a check here. If head uh, is null, then head is equal to my transform. So if the player didn't, I mean the, uh, well, you as the developer didn't set that. Okay, and for check rate, I left that purposely blank. I want to actually use a random range. So check rate is equal to random dot range zero point eight to one point two f. So this will ensure that all of the um, uh, golems that you spawn they all have a somewhat different check rate because the overlap sphere uh, is a little bit expensive. So it's better to just sort of stagger them uh, by a simple little technique like this. Okay, and then set initial references, and also enemy master dot event enemy die plus equal dot disable this. Okay, in update I will just call carry out detection. And I'll go ahead and I'll actually I'll write the other uh, method that I haven't written yet. It's actually a boolean. Uh, so boolean can potential target be seen. And I'll just put here transform potential target. So this is where I'll cast the line cast. So if physics dot line cast needs a starting position, so head dot position. Uh, it needs an end position, so that will be potential target dot position. And also I'll have a uh, layer, so it'll be site layer. And of actually also I'll need to have uh, the out hit value as well, so there's another option for that. Where is that? There we go. So that's how I need to write it, out, hit, yeah, that's better, because I need that. I need to check what it is that I've hit uh, with the line cast. 
So now I can check if hit.transform is the same as potential target. That means it's the player. So that's what I'll be supplying to it. Then that means I can call the event that I've got a, a nav target. So it's enemy master dot call event set nav target. And that is potential target. Okay. And return, oops, return true. Else, I'm going to say if the line cast get blocked by something or yeah, so there has to have been something obstructing uh, the enemy's visibility. Then in that case, enemy master dot call event loss target and return false. Okay, and well, this is not possible, but nevertheless, for the sake of the method, I have to put an else statement with a return because otherwise, not all code paths are returning something. Uh, so there, it actually says down there, not all code paths return a value, and I must, so I have to say else. And for the sake of it, enemy master dot call event lost target, and return false. Okay, and that will be that. So that's good. Now I need to actually carry out the hit detection. Well, not hit detection, sorry, the overlap sphere. So if time dot time is greater than uh, next check but I won't forget to say next check is equal to time dot time plus check rate okay then I'll say collider uh, it's an array colliders is equal to physics dot overlap sphere and the position is my transform dot position uh, the radius what do I call that detect radius and the layer as well so that would be player layer okay so now I need to check that did I actually find anything in there? So if I did, if the overlap sphere touched the player, then colliders must be greater than zero, its length. So if colliders dot length greater than zero, that means I've got something. So then I should go through it. So for each collider potential target collider in colliders oops and now while I'm going through them I should compare their tag so if potential target collider dot tag or other dot compare tag is the player tag so game manager references dot player tag It would then mean that yes, there is a player in the detection radius, but can the enemy actually see the player? So if the enemy, if the player is hiding, then the enemy can't see them and they shouldn't have a target to pursue. Okay. So that's where I'll say if can potential target be seen and which target is that? That is the uh, potential target collider dot transform. So if that is the case, then just break, get out of the for loop, uh, job done. So now this part will handle whether uh, we can see the enemy or not. And uh, if the colliders uh, were zero, if the collider's length was zero, if, it, if nothing was detected by the overlap sphere, then this is just an automatic enemy master dot call event loss target. So there's no target, clear out uh, any possibility of that, and just uh, do something else instead. 
Okay, so that's it for the script. It's pretty much done. Can't think of anything else I need to do to it. So going back to the golem, all I need to do is to attach it on, and I need to set the player layer to player. The site layer should be everything except certain things like not transparent, don't see, uh, this shouldn't block the vision, anything with ignore raycast, anything with enemy should also not block vision, so that way a group of enemies, they'll all chase after the player without only just the ones in the front row seeing the player, then all of them can actually see uh, the player and they'll chase after the player, so very important. that. So I still have to set that layer actually. And uh, what else? I guess UI shouldn't block, weapon shouldn't block either. Uh, probably not item either, that shouldn't block the view of the uh, enemy, and yeah, that's probably good enough. Now of course I also need the head transform as well, so let me just expand that and put that on. Uh, there it is, drag it on, okay, so that's good, I'll hit apply, just save that. Uh, as for the golem too, uh, what is important is that the uh, colliders, so these colliders, they don't interfere. Because they're not enabled, that's good, they won't interfere. But currently the layer is default. I'll just set it to enemy, I'll just set everything to that layer just for now. And uh, it shouldn't have any problem. When I have more golems, they shouldn't block each other's view. Uh, now another thing, uh, well I'll just run it first. So let me hit play. Jump in. Can the golem see uh, anything? And okay, so it hasn't detected anything, so I've definitely made a mistake. So let me just stop that and go to the script. And yeah, the problem is right here. I just got distracted and didn't write else. So otherwise it's always going to lose the target after even finding it. It needs to be within an else block. That's my mistake. Good. So make sure to do that. Make sure to add that correction in. It's of course if it finds it, then it carries out the line of sight action, and then it's found by that, and if none of that worked else, uh, then lose the target. Otherwise, if you put lose target here, of course it's going to lose the target. So going back, now it'll work. So hit play, and we should find that uh, when I get out, there we go, the player transform is found in my target. So that is good. Uh, I can do another thing as well. How about I move the golem a bit? Create a 3D object cube. I just reset its position and to increase its size. So, like say eight, I make it taller. Lift it up. Okay, something like that. And hit play. Select the golem. I'll check. I'll look at my target. There you go. It can't find the player because the player is behind a wall. Now, as soon as I move into view, there it found the player. I move back behind the wall, and there you go, it lost the target. So it's working. The system, the detection system is working just fine. Now we need to make the enemy actually move. So that's it for this video, so move on to the next video. Thanks for watching.